In this tutorial, we are going to start working towards a larger goal of creating a full experiment in smaller steps. The experiment we will have in the end will be a Simon effect experiment. In a Simon effect experiment, red and blue boxes are shown on the left or right of the screen. When participants see a red box, they may be asked to push the left button. When participants instead see a blue box, they may be asked to push the right button. The side of the screen that the box appears on is unrelated to the task, but when the red box appears on the left side of the screen, responses are faster than when they appear on the right. Instead of going directly towards the finished experiment, we will use each step along the way to illustrate presentation features and programming concepts, often making short tangents. Let's start with the basic stimulus display. For the coloured boxes, we will use the type box. When you are working with any presentation object type, there are two places in the documentation that are helpful. The first is the PCL reference section that we have discussed before. This page is useful when you already know basically what the type represents and how it works, but want to find specific information about properties and methods. In addition, each type is discussed in the main text of the documentation. For example, there is a box picture parts page within the main section on stimuli. We will create a box object using SDL, using the reference page to find the available properties and corresponding SDL parameter names. This SDL statement creates a square red box 100 pixels in size. The PCL variable referencing this object is named redbox. Like the text type that we have used previously, the type box is a child type of type picture part. Therefore, it may be used as one of the graphical elements in a picture object. Next, we create a picture object to display the box. We will place the box in the centre for now and deal with positioning later. In the experiment we will display a fixation cross prior to each target stimulus. For simplicity, we will just use a text object with the caption plus. You could alternatively use two boxes to create a cross or use the type bitmap to display any fixation cross image you have prepared ahead of time. For the fixation picture object, we use the option of putting the text definition inside the picture definition. To take a quick look at these stimuli, we can use the picture type method present and the wait interval function we used previously. Although we've used the present method a few times for convenience to take a look at picture stimuli, aside from animation sequences, this method is typically not used for stimulus presentation in real experiments. Instead, we use an important type in presentation called trial. Trial objects handle the presentation of a sequence of one or more stimuli with specified timing. This allows presentation to prepare and schedule stimuli as precisely as possible. While a trial in presentation may be equivalent to what you consider a trial in your experiment, it does not have to be. A trial in presentation may contain any arbitrary sequence of stimuli, which might represent only part of a trial in your experiment, or even several trials. In what follows, when we use the word trial, we refer to the trial type in presentation, rather than the general experimental term unless specifically noted. We will start by showing the fixation picture for 500 milliseconds and then the red box. It's most convenient to define trial objects in SDL. For each stimulus in the sequence, we first state what stimulus objects to use. This syntax is similar to how picture parts are listed in the SDL definition of a picture object. Following the stimulus object declaration, we can define parameters that affect this particular presentation of that stimulus. For the moment, we will only define timing-related parameters. This time value is relative to whenever this trial is presented. 
To continue with the next stimulus in the sequence, simply specify another stimulus object. Again, following this are any parameters related to that stimulus presentation. Here we show the box at trial time 500 milliseconds. The type trial also has a present method that presents the entire sequence, which we use in our PCL program. Running this scenario, we see the fixation for 500 milliseconds and a flash of the red square. By default, trials last as long as the stimulus sequence in them. Therefore, as soon as the stim picture appears on the display, the trial ends and then the scenario ends, which is why the red square only appears briefly. We can change this by using a trial property called trial duration. In the SDL definition, any trial properties can be defined before the list of stimuli. Running this, we see the fixation for 500 milliseconds and the red box for another second. Note that for these examples, we are ignoring issues of vertical refresh in our timing, which will be discussed in another tutorial. You can also see the presentation documentation for a discussion of picture timing control. One important quality of trials is that their lifetime can be independent of the stimulus sequence in them. For example, say we set the trial duration to 300 milliseconds instead, which is before the appearance of the box. Running this, we do not see the red box at all. When a trial ends, presentation will move on regardless of where it is in the trial's stimulus sequence. Trials can also be set to end after various responses, in which case the trial could end any time. Looking at the stimulus sequence definition in SDL, we have divided each stimulus and its related parameters using spacing, although we didn't have to. Although it's not so apparent here, each stimulus object and the following parameters are actually packaged together into another type of object called a stimulus event. So a stimulus event contains a reference to a stimulus object and all the parameters that affect the particular presentation of that stimulus within a trial. You can see a list of these properties on the Stimulus Event Reference page. We can illustrate this by using a more detailed syntax that declares these Stimulus Events objects explicitly inside the trial definition. Writing it this way is completely equivalent to the previous version, but makes it clear that trial objects contain a list of Stimulus Events rather than just a list of Stimulus objects. In addition, this allows naming of particular stimulus events so that a PCL variable to access that stimulus event is created for you. For example, we can name the second stimulus event stim event and then use that variable in PCL to change a stimulus event parameter during the experiment. In this case, we show the box one second after the fixation appears the second time the trial is presented. Even when not named, you can access the stimulus event objects in a trial using the trial get stimulus event method. However, it's usually clearer to name stimulus events of interest in SDL. Often you may see stimulus events that are changed in the program named in SDL, while others simply use the shorter syntax we started with. We conclude this lesson by noting that stimulus events and therefore trials are linked to logging of stimuli. In order for presentation to log the occurrence and timing of a stimulus, it must be presented in a trial. This is controlled by the event code stimulus event property. To log the box presentation, define the event code property using the SDL parameter code. We can see the effect of this by temporarily turning on the scenario report from the settings tab and running the scenario. Using the picture present method to display a picture stimulus would not produce such an entry. Trials have many other features and properties that are applicable in different situations. We will explore many of these as we build our experiment.